Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 1 of Swing 101. In this tutorial series, I am going to show you guys how to use the Swing API in order to create uh, nice looking uh, graphical user interface programs written in pure Java. Um, Swing is pretty easy to use. It has a wide variety of features and you know different objects that you can use, and it's bundled with Java. So anyone who has Java installed has Swing installed. They don't need to have anything, and you don't need to add any dependencies uh, to your project. So it's nice and easy to use right out of the box. Um, in this tutorial series, it's going to work similar to the Java 101 tutorial series where we work towards making something bigger. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but so if, you have, if you guys have any ideas, let me know in the description. Uh, but in today's episode, uh, I'm just going to give you an introduction, and we're going to actually just make a window show up and maybe change some of the information uh, in the window. So the first thing that we need to do, as always, is go ahead and make our public static void main um, string array args. All right. So inside of the main method, let's actually go ahead and declare a frame. First thing that I usually do when using um, swing is I like to create a constructor and then just call it in uh, in the main method. This is optional, but by doing this, I can put all of the code in here and it's no longer static because if I do it in the main method, then everything that I use in here has to be static. If I do it in the constructor, then, I, then it doesn't have to be static and it's just easier when you don't make everything static. So that's optional and if that doesn't make sense, uh, then don't worry about it, but uh, I'm just going to be using the constructor. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is declare a JFrame. Um, a JFrame is the uh, swing class that represents a frame or a window uh, that would show up on the screen. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and call this frame and set it equal to a uh, new JFrame. And in the constructor, you can actually give it the title uh, that you want it to be. So in this case, we'll say Swing 101, and like how up here, Java, and then Swing 101, Eclipse, all that stuff up there. Um, here, the title of the frame would be Swing 101. And now we have this JFrame. Now, you could subclass JFrame, make, uh, make this class extend JFrame, and then call everything, and I would usually do that, but uh, in this video, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and have an object and call methods on the object so as to not cause any confusion. You can easily subclass JFrame, though, uh, which I usually would do. Uh, so within the frame, if you go ahead and type in frame dot, uh, you'll notice that tons and tons of methods show up uh, and that's because swing um, is just full of methods uh, you know which are inherited like I think JFrame uh, comes from window which then comes from uh, you know, which then comes from, you know, eventually component, which contains all of these uh, different methods. And most of them you're probably never going to use, but, uh, you know, also others are deprecated. They were used in previous versions, but they were replaced, so they're no longer needed. But there are plenty of methods that you will uh, need to know how to use. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is if I actually go ahead and run this, uh, you'll notice that nothing happens. You'll see this little pop-up show because it is uh, using you know a component of swing but there's no window or anything and I'll go ahead and quit out of it and that's because uh, by default the JFrame is not visible so you need to call frame.setVisible true you can toggle this of course if you want to make it visible and then not visible uh, later so that's how you would do visibility so you'll see that this there's this tiny tiny little pop-up that shows up in the very corner and you can resize it. You'll see that the title is Swing 101, and the uh, area here is empty. Uh, so now let's actually go ahead and check out some of the other cool methods that you can do. Uh, if you go ahead and do frame dot set size, you'll see that um, there is a method to um, set the size, and it takes the width and the height, or a dimension. Dimension is a swing class or an AWT class that basically 
just is a wrapper for width and height. So it's the same thing as doing set size with the width and height. In this case, we're going to set it to be 640 by 480, which is kind of like a standard window size. And I feel like it's, you know, this is what it looks like. It's a pretty uh, decent size. And uh, that'll show up right there. Uh, now you can toggle or disable resizing with frame.setResizable false. And now if I go ahead and run it, I'm not able to resize it. If, you, if your window doesn't automatically resize itself or it looks bad if you try to resize it, then you probably want to disable it. For example, in the uh, RPG Game Jam where we did use Swing, we used a slightly different version with painting rather than components, but we did use Swing, and uh, in that case we did not want it to be resizable or else uh, it wouldn't look right because we did not have scaling implemented, so I made resizing false or I disabled it so that I didn't have to worry about people resizing it and having a weird looking frame. Uh, this next one's a little trick that you can do. Right now the window is showing up at the top left, but if you actually type in frame.setLocation relative to null, it will actually center it in the middle of the screen. I'm not completely sure why, but I happen to know uh, that if you set it relative to null, the location relative to null, it will actually go ahead and center it. Uh, one other important thing is, notice how when I press the X button, uh, the window goes away, but this process uh, is still running. It doesn't quit. So you can actually go ahead and say frame dot um, set default close operation, and then it takes window constants dot, and you'll see we have a couple of options: dispose on close, do nothing on close, exit or hide. Uh, so dispose on close will um, get rid of the window. So if you had multiple windows and you just wanted to get rid of a window when it closed, you would use dispose. I think that's what it does uh, by default, either that or hide. Uh, so that would just get rid of the window. Do nothing on close would just ignore any, you know, uh, click. Uh, hide on close will just hide the window, which is, I believe, the equivalent of set visible false. And then the one that we're going to use is exit on close. So, um, if you use the exit on close, uh, and take a look right now, if I quit out of that window or close it, it will automatically quit the application. So, chances are, uh, you know, if you have one main window for your application, that would probably be exit on close. And if you had other, like, windows that would come up later, those would probably be dispose on close. But in this case, uh, we want it to be exit. Now, of course, if you take a look through uh, all of the different methods in here, you'll notice that there are tons of other methods. There are some getters for information and some setters and uh, lots of stuff. I'll quickly show you that you can do um, set background and you can give it a color. So if we want to make it a nice cyan background and I go ahead and run it now, it was strange. Let me check one thing out might need to actually pack the frame. Not sure. Ugh. Okay. Well, that is strange that the background isn't working. I will look into that and see if uh, see if I'm doing something wrong. It, it could be um, like set foreground or whatever. Not get, it would be set. Uh, I don't believe it is. It should be the background, and I'm not sure why that's working, but um, I'll, I'll take a look at that. There are um, a lot of different uh, methods throughout uh, the frame class that allow you to do a bunch of different things to customize the window, uh, but as an introduction video, I just wanted to show you guys how to create a frame, change some of the core values of the frame, and then make the frame visible so you could actually see it. In the next video, we're going to actually get started with components. I'm going to show you guys how components work, and we're going to make it display um, the text, Hello World. Uh, and then from there, there are tons and tons and tons of things that you can do with Swing. Uh, it's what I do primarily, so I have tons of cool examples of things you could do. Uh, you know, there's you know text input buttons, labels, uh, you know, a menu bar, kind of like this one at the top. Um, pretty much anything you can imagine you can do in Swing. It's made for, um, I'd say it's probably best suited for, like, form-related things, like, 
it would be great to make a survey program because it has you know radio buttons and text entries and buttons and everything that you could possibly need but you can also adapt it for pretty much anything uh, that you want so that's why I like swing so much as a as an API. So that's all for this video. We created a frame, changed some values, and made it displayed. Uh, as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. Also, let me know what you want the culminating project to be. In Java 101, the project is a little text-based adventure game. What do you want it to be for Swing? Like a nice-looking graphics-related uh, program. Maybe a little calculator or a some kind of a, you know, form, I, whatever you guys can think of, uh, just make sure to let me know. And uh, if you liked the video, click the like button. I will see you guys soon with the next episode of Swing 101 and more videos in general. And see you soon. Bye, guys.